Cryptocurrency has created a fair few billionaires since Bitcoin began back in 2009. The amazing potential for wealth is what attracted most people to the crypto space over the last year, and some newcomers have managed to make their dollar dreams come true. Now, while the list of the richest people in crypto has changed many times over the years, they all seem to have a few key characteristics in common. Today, I'm going to tell you who the richest people in cryptocurrency currently are how they manage to make it big, and I'll identify the characteristics they have that will help you do the same. I know you want to get rich, but I have an important disclaimer to pitch. Nothing in this video should be interpreted as financial instruction. That's because I'm not a financial advisor, so there would be some serious repercussions. This video is just for your education and entertainment. Call your financial advisor if you want to know where to put your payment. If you've never seen me before, my name is Guy, and when it comes to crypto, I always want more. The Coin Bureau is home to some of the highest quality crypto content you can find. News, reviews, exchanges, DeFi, tools, and market moves. There's enough to watch here to make you go blind. If crypto is what you crave, subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell to see these every day. Take a second to skim over the timestamps I've left in the video timeline. You can use them to skip around, but if you watch the whole way through, that would be mighty fine. Now that you know the sitch, let's take a look at a few crypto billionaires and how they got rich. Before I get into the list, I should probably explain how I put it together. Figuring out who the richest people in cryptocurrency actually are is much easier said than done, and this is for a few reasons. First, there are lots of unknown whales that hold tens of billions of dollars in high market cap cryptocurrencies. For example, there's the mysterious Dogecoin whale who currently holds nearly $12 billion worth of Doge. This would make them one of the richest, if not the richest person in crypto, assuming they're a person and not a company, of course. Similarly, Bitcoin creator Satoshi Nakamoto is believed to have 1 million Bitcoin in his possession across multiple wallets. Now, whether this so-called Tulip Trust actually exists has been debated, but if it does, it would mean Satoshi holds over $37 billion in Bitcoin at its current price. This would make Satoshi the richest person in cryptocurrency and one of the richest people on the planet. Since we don't know who these anonymous whales are and also can't verify their total crypto holdings, I haven't included them on this list. And this brings me to my second rich list criterion, and that's that all the crypto billionaires I'll be mentioning in this video actually have billions of dollars in cryptocurrency. That's because there are many cryptocurrency billionaires who hold most of their wealth in non-crypto assets, and that arguably disqualifies them from being a true crypto billionaire. For example, Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong is technically the richest person in crypto with a net worth of $8.5 billion. However, most of Brian's net worth comes from his 19% stake in Coinbase, which has a market cap of $48 billion and not his crypto holdings. And moreover, I couldn't find any information on his crypto holdings. Similarly, MicroStrategy CEO Michael Saylor has a net worth of $2 billion, but this is mostly because of his stake in MicroStrategy, which holds over $2.2 billion in Bitcoin on its balance sheets. Now that said, Michael personally holds around 18,000 Bitcoin worth $670 million, which still makes him one of the wealthiest crypto holders out there. And finally, it should go without saying that this rich list will likely change since the cryptocurrencies these billionaires hold will change in value over time, possibly even before this video hits the tube. Two crypto billionaires seem to be tied for sixth place, and these are Tim Draper and Max Kaiser. Tim holds at least $1 billion in Bitcoin alone, and Max likely holds a similar amount. Tim comes from an extremely wealthy background, consisting of venture capitalists, Hollywood actors and actresses, and government officials. He holds a bachelor's and a master's degree from two Ivy League universities and has a long history of being a visionary investor. For example, he became one of the first US venture capitalists to invest in a Chinese company when he bought a 28% stake in Baidu for $9 million in 2001. Baidu is now worth over $67 billion. 
In 2006, Tim's VC firm was part of a funding round for Tesla. I wasn't able to figure out exactly how many shares he got, but it is likely in the billions of dollars as well. Tim's personal crypto fortune comes from his famous 2014 purchase of Bitcoin that had been confiscated by US authorities as part of their crackdown on the Silk Road darknet marketplace. The US Marshal Service auctioned off 30,000 BTC, which landed in Tim's wallet for $19 million. Tim continues to hodl that BTC to this day and has since bought an unknown amount of altcoins, including Bitcoin Cash, XRP, Aragon, and Tezos. This is in stark contrast to Max Kaiser, who is a diehard Bitcoin maximalist. Max's investing career began back in the 80s when he worked as a stockbroker at an investment bank in New York City. His experience on Wall Street turned him into an outspoken critic of the current financial system and fiat currencies, which are constantly being devalued by government printing. Max has built his career on his critiques, and when this new career began, the best hedges against fiat currencies were gold and silver. Max continued to stack both until 2011, when he heard about Bitcoin and realized that it was nothing less than digital gold. While Max's exact Bitcoin holdings are not known, he started buying BTC when it was just $1 and has given away thousands of BTC to friends, most notably 10,000 BTC to Alex Jones, which he lost. In a 2013 episode of the Kaiser Report, Max announced that he had become a Bitcoin millionaire. Now, given the price of BTC at the time, this works out to about 25K BTC. And since Max has continued to buy Bitcoin since then, this would put his crypto holdings on a par with Tim Draper's and land Max a net worth in crypto just north of $1 billion. The fifth biggest crypto billionaire is none other than Ethereum founder Vitalik Buterin, who currently holds more than 334,000 ETH. Vitalik also holds hundreds of millions of dollars in Bitcoin and other altcoins, which gives him an approximate crypto net worth of 1.5 billion. Vitalik's Ethereum wallet address has been known since late 2018, when he shared it over Twitter in response to criticism over Ethereum's pre-mine. As part of this thread, Vitalik notes that he has never held more than 1% of all the ETH in circulation. Given that Ethereum had a pre-mine of roughly 73 million coins, this means that Vitalik has likely never held more than around 730,000 ETH. Most of Vitalik's initial ETH was sold between 2015 and 2018 for roughly $50 million in total, which is peanuts compared to what that ETH would be worth now. Vitalik first learned about cryptocurrency from his dad, who told him about Bitcoin in 2011. A few months later, Vitalik began writing for the now famous Bitcoin magazine and became one of its co-founders. What's crazy is that in 2012, Vitalik applied to work at Ripple and was accepted but couldn't start his position due to visa issues. Now that is a parallel universe I wouldn't mind exploring. Anyways, while studying at the University of Waterloo, Vitalik tried and failed to create elaborate smart contracts on the Bitcoin blockchain. This led him to create a new cryptocurrency that would be more programmable and scalable, and the name of that cryptocurrency was obviously Ethereum. Vitalik penned the Ethereum white paper in 2013 and dropped out of university to work on his new project full time. Ethereum went live in 2015 with Vitalik and seven others being credited as its founders. Ethereum's other co founders continue to be some of the richest people in crypto, notably Joseph Lubin, who is the founder of Consensus, one of the largest companies that works on Ethereum. The fourth biggest crypto billionaires are the Winklevoss twins, with each twin holding between two and three billion dollars in cryptocurrency, mostly Bitcoin. Tyler and Cameron are savants in every sense of the word. For starters, when they were kids, they taught themselves how to code and started a web development company. As teenagers, they learned Latin and Greek and played multiple musical instruments at a proficient level. As young adults, Tyler and Cameron both studied at Harvard and Oxford and even competed in the 2008 Olympics, where they placed sixth in coxless rowing. Now, what Tyler and Cameron are most famous for, however, is suing Facebook in 2004 on the grounds that Mark Zuckerberg had stolen their idea. This is because the trio had worked together on another social media platform and Zuckerberg had copied some of the code to create Facebook. 
Tyler and Cameron settled the lawsuit in early 2008, landing them $20 million in cash and $45 million in Facebook stock. While on holiday in Ibiza in 2013, Tyler and Cameron learned about Bitcoin and subsequently decided to buy 1% of all the BTC in circulation. This is because they believed and continue to believe that Bitcoin's market cap will grow to be as large as gold's. One year later, the duo founded the now famous Gemini cryptocurrency exchange, which has lagged behind in adoption due to its religious adherence to inconsistent crypto regulations in the US. At the Bitcoin conference in Miami the other weekend, the pair noted that they will not even think about selling any more BTC until it hits a price tag of 500k. Even when it gets that expensive, they said that they will most likely use it as collateral to take out loans for any money they would need. For those who don't know, this is a clever way to avoid capital gains tax in the United States, and it's the same thing other Bitcoin billionaires do, including Max Kaiser. The reason it's possible is because the underlying asset never gets sold, meaning a capital gain was never realized, even if you're borrowing cash against the asset in question. You can learn more about how to reduce your cryptocurrency tax burden by watching my video about that using the link up there in the top right. The third biggest crypto billionaire is Ripple co-founder Chris Larson, who holds anywhere between 5.2 and 7.8 billion XRP. Now, this roughly corresponds to 5 and 7.8 billion dollars at XRP's current price of around a dollar. The reason for this huge range has to do with the conflicting information about Chris's XRP holdings from two reputable sources. The first is Forbes, which noted that Chris has roughly 5.2 billion XRP in 2018. The second comes from the SEC lawsuit against Ripple and its top executives last December, which notes that Chris had sold 1.7 billion XRP to date. The 7.8 billion figure comes from subtracting the 1.7 billion XRP in the SEC suit from Chris's initial XRP allocation of 9.5 billion. Chris holds a Bachelor of Science and a Master's degree from the Stanford Graduate School of Business, which is famous for being the most selective business school in the world. Chris has founded and sold many startups over his 30-year career in technology and has always kept a close eye on digital currencies. He co-founded Ripple Labs with Jed McCaleb in 2012, who is also the co-founder of Stella and the now-defunct Mt. Gox cryptocurrency exchange. Jed McCaleb was also allocated 9.5 billion XRP, but he has already sold most of it. Depending on who you ask, Jed has between 300 and 600 million XRP left to sell. All XRP allocated to Ripple's founders is subject to a vesting schedule that will last until 2026, assuming the SEC doesn't succeed in its case against Ripple, in which case Chris's XRP would be unsellable by law. Luckily for Ripple, the future appears to be in its favor, and you can learn about the latest updates from the Ripple lawsuit by watching my video about it all. Link is in the usual spot, top right. The second biggest crypto billionaire is Sam Bankman-Fried, founder of Alameda Research and the FTX cryptocurrency exchange. Although Sam's exact crypto holdings are not known, I estimate them to total anywhere between five and $10 billion. This is primarily because of the team allocations of FTX's FTT token and the Serum Dex's SRM token, which have fully diluted market caps in the tens of billions of dollars. The FTX team has also received a sizable share of the various tokens that have launched on its platform, and I imagine Sam holds a decent amount of Solana given that it hosts the Serum Dex. Like Chris Larson's XRP, all these tokens allocated to FTX team members are subject to lengthy vesting schedules, meaning Sam doesn't have all of this cryptocurrency on hand per se. After receiving a degree in physics from MIT, Sam worked for a famous trading firm on Wall Street before going on to found Alameda Research in 2017. Alameda Research is a cryptocurrency trading firm that specializes in liquidity provision for cryptocurrency exchanges. Now, in plain English, liquidity provision means they basically make sure that there's always enough cryptocurrency on exchanges for traders to trade. Sam's claim to fame was the arbitrage trades he conducted with Alameda Research between cryptocurrency markets in the US and Japan during the last bull run. As some of you may know, the price of cryptocurrencies can be much higher in some Asian countries 
due to regulations around transferring money overseas. The best known example of this is the kimchi premium, which saw Bitcoin trading at a 30% markup in South Korea in early 2018. Sam noticed that a similar price premium of about 10% was consistently present in Japan at the time. Naturally, he decided to start buying up a bunch of Bitcoin in the United States to sell for a 10% profit on Japanese crypto markets. In a recent interview, Sam explained that Alameda practiced the process with just $200 before going in with larger sums of money. It didn't take long before they were stopped by banks on both sides of the ocean who thought Alameda was laundering money. Sam said they had to hire teams of translators and legal experts to tell all these money middlemen what an arbitrage trade was, and even considered physically flying between countries to execute the trades. At the peak of this process, Alameda was selling tens of millions of dollars of US-bought Bitcoin on Japanese markets every day, making more money than Sam could ever have imagined. Alameda has consequently become one of the largest movers of money in the crypto space, providing liquidity for more than 10% of all cryptocurrency exchange trading volume on any given day. The FTX Derivatives Exchange is Sam's second endeavor, and it has become one of the most popular cryptocurrency exchanges since it was founded in 2019. Alameda and FTX have been piling hundreds of millions of dollars into various cryptocurrency projects, sponsorships, and advertising campaigns. The kickbacks from those initiatives continue to increase Sam's well-deserved wealth, part of which he routinely donates to various causes. And the richest person in cryptocurrency is, drumroll please, Binance founder Changpeng Zhao. This might come as a surprise if you look up CZ official net worth, which is listed at around $2 billion. However, CZ's history and the initial allocation of BNB suggest that his net worth is much higher and could be as much as $15 billion. CZ was born in China but moved to Canada to join his father, who had been exiled for being on the wrong side of the Chinese Cultural Revolution. CZ learned to code as a teenager and earned a computer science degree from a prestigious university in Canada. After graduating, he moved to Japan, where he worked as an intern building and maintaining trading software for the Tokyo Stock Exchange. A few years later, he moved back to China, where he continued to work on advanced trading software. Then, in 2013, he was hanging out with a couple of friends who were involved in cryptocurrency, and one of them told him, quote, CZ, you should convert 10% of your net worth into Bitcoin, because there's a very small chance it will go to zero and you'll lose that 10%. There's a high chance it will go 10x and then you would double your net worth. After attending a crypto conference later that year, CZ subsequently decided to sell his apartment in Shanghai and go all in on Bitcoin. If my calculations are correct, this banked him anywhere between 50 to 100,000 BTC. CZ worked as the chief technology officer at the OKCoin OK exchange until 2017 when he founded Binance. Within seven months, Binance was the largest crypto exchange in the world. According to CZ, Binance's success boils down to the fact that all the other cryptocurrency exchanges at the time basically sucked, and his extensive experience building trading systems allowed him to create something better. Not long after its launch, Binance conducted an ICO for its BNB token. 40% of BNB's initial supply of 200 million was allocated to the founding team. When you consider the fact that CZ has stated that he holds most of his wealth in BNB, and that he doesn't bother trading because he always loses money when he tries, this suggests he's been hodling his BNB and BTC. CZ's BNB holdings alone could easily be over $10 billion at today's prices. And something tells me he's bought a lot more Bitcoin over the years too. I know I have. And, by the way, if you're interested in learning more about Binance and how to use it, I have a dedicated video on that. Top right, por favor. Cryptocurrencies can make you a lot of coin, but there's a big difference between the millionaires and the billionaires in this space. Even among the richest, you can see that there are massive discrepancies in their wealth, and this is because of a few key characteristics. All the richest people in crypto have three things in common. First, they're educated. Besides going to prestigious schools, almost every crypto billionaire 
push themselves to learn as much as they could about the things they were passionate about. If you've ever watched an interview with any of these gents, you'll know that they continue learning even though they don't have to. Second, all of them were willing to take risks. As I've mentioned before, it's easy to point to these people and say that you would have done the same thing if you were in their shoes. The thing is, there were no guarantees in cryptocurrency back then. All of them were terrified that Bitcoin would be banned before it got big, and they worked every day wondering if it would all be worthless tomorrow. And this brings me to the third and most important characteristic, and that's that all of the richest people in cryptocurrency didn't just invest, they built something of value. Working nine to five will get you by, and investing intelligently could make you rich. But if you want to be a billionaire, you have to build something that's worth billions of dollars. This can sound like an impossible task, but in the words of the Winklevoss twins, cryptocurrency is still just beginning. This industry is only 12 years old. To put things into perspective, this channel had 40,000 subscribers one year ago, and today it has 1 million and counting. And all I did was explain cryptocurrencies in a calm and, I hope, educated manner every day. So if you're serious about achieving financial freedom, the fastest way of getting there is to build something that's beneficial to cryptocurrency. There's no shortage of opportunity in this industry. And if you look for it, you will find it and it will change your life the same way it's changed mine. So folks, if you enjoyed today's video, help others find it by smashing that like button. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and ping that notification bell so you don't miss the next one. There are lots of things on the go here at the Coin Bureau and you can stay in the know by following me on Twitter, TikTok and Instagram using the links down below. While you're down there, join my free Telegram channel to get crypto updates on the daily and subscribe to my weekly newsletter to get the resources you need to supercharge your crypto portfolio. If you want to support what I do, you can head on over to my official merch store and get your hands on a t-shirt or a hoodie. Thank you so much for watching, folks. Until next time, Guy over and out. Thank <laughs> you.